Basketballs and donuts have different shapes, obviously. But how do I know that? Is there some way we can mathematically prove these shapes are fundamentally very different? First, the mathematical name for a basketball shape is a sphere, and the name of the shape of a donut is a torus. Now, I want to clarify what I'm talking about when I say shape. In math, there's geometry and there's topology. In topology, we only hear how a shape is connected to itself. That is, if there's some way of deforming one object into another without breaking it or gluing it to itself somehow, then we say these shapes are the same topologically or that they're homeomorphic. For example, a sphere and a cube are homeomorphic. Since the sides of a cube can be smoothed out continuously to form a sphere. So how do I know there's no way to deform a sphere into a torus using these rules that I just described? It doesn't look like it should be possible to turn a sphere into a torus, but if there is a really clever way of doing it that's eluding us, how would we know? How could we prove it mathematically? This brings us to the idea of topological invariance. Essentially, a topological invariant is some property of a shape or a topological space that stays the same as we deform it using the rules of not breaking or gluing anything. For example, the number of edges is not a topological invariant because cubes have 12 edges and circles don't have any, even though the shapes are the same topologically. So if we can identify a topological invariant that's different in the sphere than the torus, we will know these shapes are different topologically. First, imagine drawing some circle around the surface of a sphere. No matter which circle we draw, it's possible to collapse a circle down to a point without breaking it. However, on a torus, we can draw two different circles, neither of which can be collapsed down to a point. Here, I've drawn a blue circle and a red circle. The red circle is going around the girth of the torus, and the blue circle is going the long rays around the torus. Observe that one circle can't be deformed into the other one. So these two circles are, so to speak, fundamentally different. So, since we've found something fundamentally different about the torus and the sphere, it makes sense that these shapes would not be topologically the same. This idea of finding circles, or more firmly we call them loops, which cannot be collapsed down to single points, brings us to the idea of the fundamental group of the shape. In general, a group is just some set where we can combine two elements in some way to get a new element. One example of a group is the integers, in which the operation is addition. It's also the trivial group, which only has a single element. For each of our shapes, we can think of its fundamental group as the set of all possible loops we can draw on the shape. Only this isn't quite right, because we want to view any loop which can be collapsed down to a single point as essentially being the same. So for the circle, since all loops can be collapsed down to a point, the fundamental group is zero, which is the group of only one element. For the torus, however, remember we had these two different types of circles which can't be collapsed down to a single point. Because of this, we can um, associate each one of these circles to the group of integers z. To see this, we can uh, essentially think of uh, going around each circle a certain number of times as corresponding to an integer. So, for example, going around the red circle clockwise five times corresponds to the integer five. Now, the fundamental group of the torus is z times z. And we can essentially think of this group as being an ordered pair of integers. Uh, we can think of an element of this group as being the, the number, the first entry as being the number of times we go around the blue circle, and the second, second entry as being the number of times that we go around the red circle. Since the sphere and the torus have distinct fundamental groups, we know they're not the same topologically because the fundamental group is there is an example of a topological invariant. Well, topological spaces can be very hard to visualize for us. The fundamental group gives us a convenient way to simplify the space in, into a group, which is a kind of mathematical object 
that's a bit easier for us to conceptualize. So there you have it. That's how mathematicians can tell the difference between a donut and a basketball.